everybody, I'm Kelly Heidbrader and this is Lenaway. It's a half hour show where we take you with us and we visit our schools around the district and introduce you to some amazing people doing some amazing things right here at home. And we start out by taking you to Clinton Elementary School. These kids are building and programming robots and they're bringing it to you. <laughs> My name is Samuel Hoffman. I'm a fifth grader at Clinton Elementary School. And we're building a robot. And my partners are Isaac Randolph and Cash Robinson. And first we have the engines that help power the wheels. And the wheels go on here. And then the brain sits on here. And these help it stay on so it doesn't fall off. And then back here, these are the, this is where the cords go in that helps the brain um, interact with the engines. And, the, and back here is where the back wheel goes on. Let's do this. First we put on the wheels and then you add the, the little yellow things that hold the wheels on. And then you add the other wheel. Okay, after we have those on, then you add on the rear wheel. And then we put on the most important, the most important part of the brain. And then after that's finished, you put these on right there. Right. You have to put these right there on the brain. And then you add these on. Okay, then you put the other one on. Okay, and the last final step, which is the most important, you have to add on the wires. And here you have to put them into the engines. And then up here, that help them connect and they can interact with what you program it to do. And then you have to put the other one in the other motor. And now you're finished. We are doing after school robotics, which allows kids to design, program, and build robots. And they have a challenge, which they try to make their robot complete the challenge by downloading their program from the computer. and they will compete a challenge from the coaches first and then design their own challenge later. Currently we have grades fourth and fifth, but this fall we opened it up to the third graders. I have been doing robotics since I was in high school. My high school team was actually one of the first teams to pilot it, and it's my 10th year coaching. I'm Zachary Kovac, and this is Jordan Villalobos. This is our robot pork chop. I'm gonna show you how to program it. You are going to figure out if you want to go straight or turn, and then you figure out your speed, like I said. You and then you hit the download button. Let's unplug Pork Chop and see what he can do. We're Clinton Robotics. Robotics. We're bringing it to you. That's a great experience for those kids. Well, now let's take you to the Lenawee County Intermediate School District Tech Center. We have EMT and healthcare career classes teaming up for a state competition. It's called HOSA, and these kids will show you how hard it is to communicate with a deaf person when they're in distress and need some medical attention. Watch the clever way they solve the problem and help their patient. Madison from Madison High School and this is Kendall from Madison High School and we're from Healthcare Careers. What you're about to see is an accident with a deaf patient where it's difficult to communicate. Scene safe, one patient, basically a mechanism of injury. We need an LS backup at this time. Hi, I'm Bree. I'm an EMT. You can't hear me? Does anything hurt? Do you feel is that okay? Okay. Do you have any um, allergies? Are you on any medications? Okay. When's the last time you've eaten anything? Okay. Uh, do you remember what you were doing when this happened? As you can see in this scenario, it's extremely difficult to communicate with the patient. In the next scenario, we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to use the tools and the simple signs that we Use, learned in our workshop. Scene safe, one patient appears to be a mechanism of injury. ALS backup is needed at this time. Hi, I'm an EMT. You can't hear me? I'm an EMT. It's my name, okay? Um, do you lip read? Do you sign? <laughs> cool. Um, does anything 
hurt, your wrist hurts, cool. I'm gonna do a head to toe, head to toe, okay? Feel? Cool. Do yeah. you have any allergies? Okay. Um, She's clear by that. Do you have any medications? No? Um, have you had like, like have you had like a heart problem before? When's the last time you've ate or drank anything? After watching these two scenarios, you could see that the communication level in the second one was more efficient. Did you notice the difference? I'm Madison from Madison. Nice job, kids. And we saw some really great teamwork going on there. Good luck at your competition. Well, when we come back, we'll take you to Blissfield and take a tour of a company that's in its fourth generation and still going strong. We'll be prepared. It's time for You Lost Your Life with your host, Christ Dummies, Vince and Larry. Hi! Hello! <laughs> and, and welcome to the show that proves if you don't buckle your safety belt, the loser is you. That's right, Vince, and by not buckling up, you could end up in places you never dreamed. Like traction! Or the emergency room! Plus, Larry, if you're not buckled up, you could maybe take a ride in a beauty like this. Stay tuned! You've learned a lot from a devil. Buckle your safety belt. Welcome back, everybody. Well, every time you open your refrigerator, you might feel some cool air on your face because of our friends and neighbors working hard in Blissfield, Michigan. And even someday, their hard work might also help you get a big glass of clean water from virtually anywhere in the world. Let's take a tour of Blissfield Manufacturing. Blissfield Manufacturing was actually started in 1946 by my grandfather, Orville Farber. Uh, at the point in time when the company was started, he was a plant manager at Tecumseh Products, uh, working for Ray Herrick. So he asked my grandfather if he would be interested in becoming a contract manufacturer uh, of that product and uh, start building it for him. Just trying to see how everything comes together today from where it used to be in the the improvements that we've been making on the plant floor through our lean activities, you know, seeing people buy into that process, uh, it's, it's exciting to see. Seeing your people change right along with, uh, you know, the economy, right along with, you know, the trends, it's, it's exciting to watch some of that stuff. It seems like so much has moved out of Lenawee County, and we're lucky to have Plissville Manufacturing here. It's, it's very important. The Farvers have done a lot of good for Blissfield and then in Adrian. Our company, fourth generation, my uh, two sons are, are here with us now and uh, they've been here about two years. And you know, we, we still consider ourselves a family. It's just pretty simple, you know, the golden rule, you know, treat others as you want to be treated. And also try to create an environment. And I think it's up to us if we create the environment uh, that people feel that they can, uh, they can grow and learn and, and participate and be part of things. The company's changed a lot over the past, I would say, five years, ten years. I mean, there have been always different cycles of the business as far as, you know, where it goes and, and what it's pointing to. Those changes have seen Blissfield Manufacturing adapt over the past 60 years, starting with those condensing units and bringing in belt-driven compressors that have since been replaced with components from the automotive and environmental industries. Our main ones would be oil cooler, hydraulic oil cooler for the off-road industry, uh, refrigeration condensers and evaporators for anybody who goes anywhere, reaches in and grabs a pop at like a Walmart out of a, a machine. We have a part in that to a vending machine taking their soda out of its we're everywhere. Plus, we're also getting the market in the CO2 and environmentally friendly refrigeration compressor. We're hitting the market heavily in Canada, uh, Quebec, and Montreal. Um, those are some of the other areas, and also with our water treatment with the Pro 2. On any given day, workers are seen at several different pods around the facility floor, making the component parts in each step of the process for those several product lines. I'll, I'll get my cart and go gather some of the headers, 
the side members and we'll stack them up in this machine for the turbulator and it kind of flattens it out a little bit to make it go in tight through the headers and through the fans. You wheel it over to your jig table then you'll have your headers and you apply the brazing compound to it. You got to compress it, it makes everything tight and once everything's lined up you get your cooling rods and you kind of line them up, kind of wiggle them in there and then you go in with your impact hammer and just start hammering away at it. And then the welders and or the forklift driver come by and they'll pick it up and they'll take it to their station and do what they have to do to it. That attention to detail is clear throughout the building. From cutting tube lengths to applying the copper paste and powder as pieces go in the braze oven. It is best on display with the start to finish complete system water remediation unit, the new Pro 2 that is poised to revolutionize the industry. I don't know why, but I, I really, I really like that product because I've seen how fast it can make a difference. Our main use for this machine right now is putting uh, extremely high levels of dissolved oxygen into any type of a waste fluid. So it's, it's basically a massive leap forward in technology as a whole. And our largest problem in selling the machine so far is the technology is so good most people don't believe it's real. You know, I'd love to move the business forward uh, following that green technology uh, path and, you know, take our Pro 2 machines and really change the world with it. You know, that's just the tip of the iceberg as, as far as that's concerned. I mean, this, this industry, that market is just, it's huge. And, you know, for us to think that the Pro 2 is, you know, is, is the pinnacle, I mean, that's, that's totally false. Um, so, I mean, you know, the sky's the limit and, you know, I, I want to hopefully change the world. Nice story. Well, we want to thank the Farver family and all of the families that have worked at Blissfield Manufacturing for the last few decades. They're all making Lenawee County a stronger place to work and to live. Well, now it's time to check in with the Lenawee County Better Business Bureau. When we come back, they have a warning on a scam that involves a very well-known software company, Microsoft. The details are right after this. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. You may already know the name Microsoft. It's one of the most well-known software companies in the world, and scammers are ready to infiltrate your computer by using the Microsoft reputation. Dick Epstein of the Lenawee County Better Business Bureau explains. Well, Microsoft scams are a, a very large problem for Lenawee County and for all of the United States. People get a phone call uh, out of the blue. Just, just the phone rings and it's a technician. And he calls you up and he says, this is, I'm calling from Microsoft. We've been monitoring your computer. We noticed that it's running very slow and we have the ability to get in there. And it, it, the reason it's running slow is it's got a virus. It's infected and we can get in there and clean it out for you as a service. Uh, sometimes they'll first say they're Microsoft and then later they'll, they'll say, oh no, we're just tech support. And they'll have a different name for their company. But these people are not legitimate. They are not really Microsoft or whatever, Apple or HP or whatever they say they are. They are con artists who are calling from all over the world. We've had calls like this from the Philippines, from Malaysia, from uh, India. And they claim to be monitoring your computer, which is a lie. They're just calling out of the blue. Uh, you get this call and let's face it, everybody's computer runs slow. Uh, we're all fighting with our computers every day. So when you get this call, you say, yes, you're right. I, it is running slow. Help me here. Um, what they want to do is they want to get into your computer and they will walk you through the steps. They'll go to this website, click on this, enter this law and, and eventually uh, you're sitting there and you're watching your mouse, uh, the, the cursor going around because he's now in your computer. What's he doing? I don't know what he's doing. Uh, you don't know what he's doing. And there are several things he could be doing, that none of which are good. First, 
uh, most typically they're installing some kind of malware, some kind of virus or worm or trojan that they can put in your computer uh, that can um, monitor your usage of the computer, let him know your keystrokes, let him know your passwords. He can extract all kinds of information from your computer. The point is, Microsoft, the legitimate computer companies, never do this. They do not monitor your computer. I, I talked to a consumer a few days ago. They called her up and they said, we've been monitoring your computer. It, we've been getting signals from your computer that indicate that it's got a virus. And it's right now, it's signaling us. We're seeing it on our screen. And this person said, wait a minute. She says, my computer is shut down. My computer is disassembled because we're remodeling the house and it's, it's in pieces. Oh no, he says, I'm monitoring it right now and I can see uh, yeah, it, it is working. It is still sending out the signals. She hung up on him because he was obviously a crook. The most important thing is don't let them in. Check with us first. Say, t tell them, look, I don't know who you are. Give me your name. Give me your address. Give me your phone number. I'll call you back. And more than likely, he'll hang up on you. So don't do that. But if you have any questions, give us a call at BBB. If you want to contact the Lenawee County Better Business Bureau, you can give them a call or go to their website. Their website is bbb.org or call them at 419-720-7188. If you have someone in your family that is going to college, you need to fill out those financial aid forms. Don't worry, we can help you right after this. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix the beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olives, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. This is Lenaway and I'm your host, Kelly Heidbritter. Well, there's a lot of paperwork to do when you or your child are going to college. Many times you need some help paying for it. Well, the first step is to fill out the free application for federal student aid. It's also known as the FAFSA. One of our guidance counselors at Jackson College takes us through some of the simple steps to get signed up for some financial help. Hi, I'm Mallory Fraling and I am the Assistant Director for Admissions here at Jackson College. And I'm here today to talk with you a little bit about the Free Application for Federal Student Aid or the FAFSA as it's referred to. So some of the first steps to know is when you apply for financial aid, it's completely free. So do not pay to file for financial aid. It is a completely free application. There are websites out there that will charge you to file. And the first thing to know is do not ever provide that information. They're trying to steal your information. So first step, you will apply for a PIN number and you will do that at pin.ed.gov. This is your, going to be your personal identification number on your FAFSA. So the parent and student will need to apply for a PIN number. This is going to act as your electronic signature on your FAFSA. This is so the way that you will sign your FAFSA. The first thing to know too is do not share this number because that is going to be your personal identifier. So that number is individualized to you as the student and the parent. Next, you will complete your FAFSA. You will do this at FAFSA, F-A-F-S-A E-D.gov. This is the free application website. And what it will ask you for um, is your basic information. So when you apply for financial aid, you will do so each academic year. You will fill out the form anytime after January 1st of each year. So for example, the FAFSA for the 2015-16 school year will become available on January 1st of 2015. So each academic year, that's when the FAFSA will become available. The state deadline to apply for financial aid and be considered for the maximum amount of aid that you can receive is March 1st. 
That does not mean that you cannot apply after March 1st though. So definitely apply as soon as you possibly can. So complete your taxes and then file your FAFSA as soon as you can after that date. By filing your FAFSA, you will be considered for grant money as well as student loan opportunities. So the grants are the free money provided from the government and then the student loans are other opportunities to provide financial assistance to you in college. Applying for your FAFSA early is also beneficial when it comes to those scholarship applications that Mary briefly talked about. So you will need your prior year tax information. So for the 2015-16 FAFSA, you will use your 2014 tax information. You will also need your driver's license information, your social security number, as well as any savings asset or investment information. This is for both the parents and the students, so you'll need that information for everyone who will be included on the FAFSA. On your FAFSA, you will be able to list up to 10 colleges or universities that you're interested in sending your financial information to. So you can list those institutions that you're considering or 10 that you would like to have information sent from. Each school will then take your financial information and award you financial aid. So they'll review your information and send you an award letter that's going to outline for you everything you're eligible to receive at that college or university specifically. There is a process that is called verification. Some students are randomly selected for this process and what that means is that you would need to submit additional documentation to the college or university so you can receive a financial aid award from them. Some of that documentation is going to include a tax transcript requested from the IRS or high school completion, so your high school diploma, your high school transcript showing a graduation date. Those are some of the pieces you may need to submit for being awarded financial aid. Once you receive your award letter from the college or university, this is gonna give you an opportunity to compare each school and what your out-of-pocket cost is going to be at that college or university. So it's going to allow you to look and see what is your most affordable option? What school do you really wanna to go to and can I afford to go there? So that you're not going too far into debt when it comes to college. Financial aid is there as an assistance, but it isn't necessarily gonna cover everything when it comes to college. So make sure that you are looking at every piece of that. Some of the resources here in the community are here at Jackson College. We offer what are called Financial Aid Fridays where every Friday we're available from eight to noon to help families and students complete their FAFSA here on campus. The LISD next door also offers resources to the students. Your high school guidance counselors, as well as any of the other admissions and financial aid staff at the colleges and universities you consider are both great resources for you as well. So thank you for taking the time to watch this brief video. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact me here at Jackson College and I would be happy to help you answer your questions. Here's how to contact Mallory if you need more information. Her email is fralinmalloryn at jccmi.edu. Well, we'd love to hear success stories, and when we come back, I've got a few for you. People graduating from the Tech Center and making a difference in their community. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back. Alumni from the Tech Center come back to the classroom occasionally and share their real life experiences with the students in the classes. It's a great time. One recent graduate was catapulted out of the computer information services class and right into a full time job here in Lenaway. Don't move, the kids are bringing it to you. <laughs> Chris Wheeler working with ISD TV in the Computer Information Services classroom. And today we have an alumni who's doing great in the business world. Can you tell us your name? Uh, Zach Smelser. 
I was a student here junior and senior year of high school, which I graduated Lenaway Christian School. I got a job two days after I graduated and have maintained a full-time position and I've been doing great in, in this job. Primor Incorporated and they are a pressure relief valve manufacturing company. I started out as an intern. Um, they called me an IT specialist intern. Now I am the head IT technician. I deal with networks, servers, end users, you know, anything. But um, well, when I had the job interview, their one of their main server was down at the time, and that was my first task was to help that help them get their main server back online. I got my Marks, one of my Microsoft certifications while I was here. Um, that was one of the things that the, the employer was impressed with. Um, I learned a lot with networking, operating systems, setting up setting up a network. That's that's that was the starting point. That's one one skill I use every day is my networking skills, along with um, troubleshooting operating systems, Microsoft Office. I do that stuff every day. Um, it 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 provided a base a baseline of information that I needed to you know move forward in, in my career. My parents are very proud of me. They they tell me that all the time. Um, it it feels good to be successful. We're here with Josiah Valley from Lenway Christian Schools, and I got a question for you. So, considering what he said, what do you think about this? Well, I think the tech center definitely gives good opportunities for people to be successful, and I think Zach took advantage of that, and you know, and he became successful, and that's that's really cool that you can do that just from being, going to the tech center. It's, it's been a great experience to, to be in this type of job at the, at the age I am, just out of high school. So I, I, I have Carlos Garcia to thank for putting me in front of these, um, this job and the interview, but then I ran from there. I'm Chris Wheeler from Hudson High School, and we're bringing it to you. Thanks, Chris. And there are even more success stories. Hear from some of our alumni from our recent open house. And we also talked to a one alum that lives in Utah and has shared her experience around the globe. Our LSPN sports director, Miguel Gaitan, tracks them down. I'm here with Amber. Yes. Huh? Amber? Amber Gross. Yes. Uh, graduated in 89. Um, what do you uh, think coming through these halls from, from 89 to now? I mean, it's changed a lot, I'd imagine. It has. It looks more like a college than Votech when well, it was Votech many years ago. But. <laughs> <laughs> what, and what exactly did you, uh, what did you take? I took the dental aid, dental assistant program. Mm -hmm. And it, did that help you all in your career as you move forward? It did. I did that for probably about three years after I was married. And then I went switched to a different, it's still in the medical field, but I've switched to pharmacy technician. Okay, I got you. So when you see the new programs that are around here, I mean, what do you got to think? Is, is, I think your son? My is son is, yes, he's going to be coming next year. He's going to do the EMT program. That's got to be, that's cool. That is awesome. That's cool. So. And he's going to, I think he's going to be a junior then? Yes. So, you know, a 16, 17 year old kid learning stuff that 30, 40 year olds start getting themselves into. That's, that's, that's true. That's got to be a really nice thing, especially for his career it as is. he moves forward. Yes. I think he's interested in the yes. emergency since, medical thing. Since he's been like two. Okay, I got you. Um, what would you like to say to students, not just to your son, but to students walking through these halls? Kind of as an advice, uh, words of wisdom, so to speak, that you can impart on them. That there's many opportunities to take advantage of it now before you spend the money to go to college and then don't go into that career field. I would suggest doing it now instead of later. And Ken, uh, you're an alumnus here. Yes. When did you graduate? Well... 1975 and 1976 is when I was here for uh, electronics class. All right, and what is going through your mind right now and you, as you walk these halls? Uh, well, I've been here a couple times recently, so it's, you know, I've seen some of it, but I wanted to come and take the tour today. Uh, electronics class is not electronics class anymore like it was back in the 70s. Uh, it is, that same classroom now is, uh, I believe, robotics, but uh, they build these little robots that are amazing. Uh, so the electronics class that you took, uh, did it help you at all as you went well, forward in your career? It did. Uh, I still uh, am into electronics. Any kind of electronic gadgetry is uh, like a magnet to me, but 
Uh, I graduated in 76 and I did get a job in the electronics field. I repaired televisions and, and uh, stereo equipment uh, for a couple of different places and then I started my own business. I was downtown Adrian and Ken's TV service for quite a few years until TVs became disposable and had to find something else to do, so now I'm doing video production work like you guys. But how, as far as the changes go between what you learned right in, the, in 75 and 76 to what they're learning now, it's got to be, it's, it's night and day, right? Yeah, well, some of the classes I you know, look up and look through the window and it's just amazing. It really is technical. Everything, when they say tech center, they mean tech center because it's, it's really technical. Mm. Uh, is there any type of advice or anything you'd like to give to these, uh, these young students walking these halls? You can impart your wisdom on them. Wow, I don't know. Follow your dreams. <laughs> really, find something. I've heard this so many times before. So find something you like to do, and uh, it doesn't become a job. You know, it's a career, but yeah, it's something you love doing, and uh, and and uh, that's the that's the best way to go through life. You know, the last the last question I want to ask you, um, as far as the tech center goes. Um, how has it helped you? How do you see it helping these kids in the future? Well, when I see some of the courses now, they're doing the culinary and the, and the medical uh, medical field stuff. Um, I didn't get a chance to go through too many of them, but uh, it just gives them a great start in life to get, get out there and, and get their career going. I came to Votech in 1974 and 75, two years and the second year went out to work at a print shop. So I was able to learn things like how to print things in the darkroom, how to make banners, how to make business cards, how to do all sorts of things that a print shop did manually. I was able to be involved with the MRI education department that they have. It's called SMRT, a society to teach MR techs how to do their job. and. I was in the ground floors back in 1992 when we first started the society and I was blessed enough to be on their policy board and the meetings had to be international every two years and so I was able to go out to Australia and Berlin and um, Vancouver, um, eat neat places all over the world and uh, I was able to make more money and, and do more interesting jobs in that same field so it was a no-brainer for me. Thanks, Miguel. That's the Lenawee County ripple effect. It's spreading all over the world, just one person at a time. Well, I'm getting a little bit hungry. How about you? Well, then it's time to check in with our culinary students for one of their great recipes. Hang on for about 30 seconds, and I'll be right back. May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back. Well, when I was a kid, one of our favorite desserts at my grandmother's house in Petersburg was her famous lemon meringue pie. And she always had meringue perfectly piled high on each piece. Well, Dakota Rob Spry is a student that goes to Britain Deerfield High School, and she's taking on the meringue challenge. Hi, I'm Nakota Rob Spry. I'm the second year culinary student. I'm from Britain Deerfield and I'm going to show you how to make Italian meringue today. So first what you want to do is you want to have sugar, light corn syrup, and water. Turn it on to a high heat. Um, and you want it to boil and it will get to a, a softball stage, it will be done. Um, and next you would take the, your egg whites and um, when you're separating the egg, you, want, you don't want any yolk in your egg whites or it won't, like your product will not turn out. And you want to add a pinch of cream of tartar to stabilize your eggs. Um, and you want to bring the egg whites and the cream tartar to a soft peak. Um, a so there is a difference between a soft peak and a stiff peak. 
a stiff peak, it will stay straight up, and a soft peak, it will do the little fold over. And then you want to sprinkle sugar in there. Once you get it to the right temperature, 240, then you can take this. You want to temper your eggs. You want to slowly pour the sugar in at a steady stream, but you don't want to hit the whip attachment because you don't want the sugar to go all over. And then you'd want to turn it up to high and whip it until it's cool. And now it's cool enough to use, and we're going to pour it in a pie shell. And now we're going to do that cool thing with meringue. That's how you make Italian meringue, and you're catching it in the classroom. Nice job, Dakota. My grandmother will be very proud of you. When we come back, we're going to take you to Onset High School to show you their school spirit and some of their fabulous teachers that bring it right out of them. Stay there. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Hey everybody, time to stand up and show your high school spirit. Do you know your fight song? Well, the kids in Onstead do. They show off their school spirit during homecoming, and the teachers say it really translates to better work in the classroom. Watch this. <laughs> I'm Ethan Cosmo, and I normally see you on the sidelines at LSPM, but today I'm at my high school, Senor Jackson, our Spanish teacher, and he's also our homecoming advisor. That's right. Here at Onset High School, we promote academics. We enjoy that. Oh, yeah. But also, the students enjoy a little bit of competition. Oh, so yeah. today, during lunchtime, they're building marshmallow towers, and we're going to blow them over with a leaf blower. It gives the kids excited and pumped for what's coming up this week. So. All right, let's go check it out. All right, so what's your guys' strategy here? Um, I don't even know. We don't even know. We're just putting sticks in and seeing how it works out. All right, sounds good. What about you guys? What's your guys' strategy? Are you going tall? Are you oh. going more structured? Structure. Structure for sure. What are you going to do about that leaf blower that's going to come in? Hope it's weak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shoot down to the seniors. All right, what's your guys' strategy today? Um, we licked them and we stuck them to the table, so when they blow them, that like they're not gonna move. All right, all right, that's, that's nice. A little sticky. All right, strategy-wise, you guys just building up, yeah, going we're more just, structured, or we're putting them together to cubes together, and then we're gonna put them up. All right, we're getting ready to blow on the freshmen. This looks like it's falling over before we even start blowing. Ready? Let's go. Oh, not so good. Next. Not. Oh, there goes the junior. Seniors, seniors. I'm going to stand back a little bit on this one. Oh, yeah! I think what's special about Onstead really is just that we have that whole community feel. And um, everyone cares for each other, and I think it really shows. And so that carries out onto uh, fields of play and onto homecoming and onto everything. I think. With Brody Fly as a junior here on the football team, and uh, he passed away, and really the football team started. We got real close, and the whole school just really, really bonded. I uh, really got together, and of course, just a sad, tragic event, but it really did show how strong Onstead is and really brought us all together. And I think um, it's carrying over into everything, into athletics, academics, and we're just staying as one big, close net school. And we're here for the Onstead um, Teachers for Students basketball game pep rally. It's our before game. It's like a tradition here and we, that we do before our homecoming game. Right now, the score is seniors nine, staff six. Who do you think is going to win, guys?
I'm here with the uh, winners yeah, of the <laughs> winners of the uh, students versus teachers basketball game. Hey guys, what'd you guys do to prepare for the teachers? Uh, we just like to pass the ball, you know, get everybody involved. Jake Jones. Yo, I hit a three. Did you see me hit a three? That was pretty sweet. I just want to say that on the record. We uh, we knew we had to shut uh, Brian Jamalski down. He he was going to be a key factor in the game tonight, but he uh, he wasn't tonight. Good question. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Uh, what do you guys do to prepare for the, uh, the athleticism yeah. of the seniors? Sure, absolutely. Uh, lots of hydration, lots and lots of hydration, lots of coffee, and then just focus on stopping them because that was, you know, they were, they were pretty good players. They were pretty good players. But uh, I will be honest with you and say uh, if we were more fit, we would have definitely beat them. No doubt about it, if we were more fit, we got them. Nothing going. Oh, for sure, Jamalski. What about, what about you? Uh, well, you know, it's... I had to take off a heart monitor, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I was out there, I was sprinting, I was working hard, I was D'ing it up, you know? Yeah, it wouldn't have helped anyway, so. Oh my gosh. Anyhow, you know, I was just D'ing it up, and then I thought to myself, you know, this is for the kids. Let them have it. So I just walked away. Walked away. All right, well, there you have it. Back to you, Kelly. Love to see that wildcat pride. Now that's our show for today. Thanks for sharing some time with us. And if you see something amazing going on right here in Lenaway, we want to know about it. Email us at lasd22 at lasd.us. I'm your host, Kelly Hyde Breeder. Make it a great day, Lenaway. <laughs>